So, yeah, basically, um, the conclusion is it's already the best heating system we've ever had. And when you're getting none of the benefits of the efficiency of having the mass release that heat slowly, uh, we're still getting up in the morning and it's warmer than it's ever been before just because the contents of the room itself have been acting as mass just from the radiant heat from the barrel. Um, I'm blown away. I'm absolutely blown away. Um, uh, and yeah, uh, it, took, it was a real trial by fire running it for the first time in, you know, a pretty substantial storm. Um, but I'm, you know, really confident in this, uh, the ability of this. Uh, the only difficulty that we did encounter was entirely my fault. Um, I got really quite rough jamming logs down into it and uh, I've knocked this fire brick here loose. So that'll be the next video will be um, the repair of that and also I'll do a slight modification here. Um, but again, you know, it, it, it's not a big deal. It's, if you're capable of building one of these, you're easily capable of doing these repairs. It's not a problem. And I was being very, very rough with it. So, yeah, um, that's the first burn of the mass heater. That's the first review, I suppose, of the mass heater. And it's brilliant. It's the best thing I've ever built. So the last video I explained about the circumstances of doing the first burn and that in, you know, inside of my own fault, I was a bit rough with the, the fuel feed and I knocked this fire brick here loose. It is still work, you know, it, it's still functional, it's not a problem, but I'm going to do this repair before I do any other construction on it. Um, it's not the best day, I'm still waiting on the part, so I still can't do the, the cob bench or that would be the priority. So I'm going to get this done just so I've got something done today. Now, the reason it happened is because when this insulation went on, it's thicker than most people would use. It's really, you know, a solid chunk of insulation. And there's two reasons for this particular insulation. One is just so it insulates the entire firebox and it really reduces the thermal mass that this is trying to heat up. So the fire brick get incredibly hot and it creates a much more efficient burn, which is you know, one of, the, one of the, uh, the, the main key concepts of the mass heater itself. But the other thing it does is, if we just encase the whole thing in cob, as the fire bricks expand and the cob being a different material, one is going to expand at a greater rate than the other and you can get cracking in the casing. Now one way of doing that is you build it all in one go with your experienced team. You build it all in you know one day, day and a half. The cob's still moist. When you run the first fire through it, everything gets expands, everything gets hot and the expansion takes place while the cob is still malleable. So you know, you're basically building your own expansion joint. Another possibility is to run stove gasket along corners and ridges and you know that makes a big difference as well because that's where you tend to get the biggest stress points and you know that's where the cracking tends to occur. Um, but the easiest thing to do is surround it in insulation which gives you the benefit of the insulation and because you've got, you know, it's very compressible stuff, that gives you that expansion joint. I use this insulation because it's what I'd got, but as I say, it's thicker than most people would use and you know it's perfectly fine, it works really well, it gives you a really insulated firebox. But um, it does mean that because there's so much flexibility in this, there's not a lot of sideways support. Now yesterday we burnt this thing for 16 hours straight and these bricks up here did actually get hot. But it takes quite a burn for them to get, you know, hot hot to the point it's a problem. So I'm not overly concerned about expansion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this insulation and the steel cage, the mesh cage, just down a few inches. So just, you know, down a little ways cut back the insulation and then when I do the rest of this cobbing which is I mean solid as I bring this cobbing up that will come in and it will surround these well not that back brick maybe but the other three bricks and it will supply a little bit of uh, sideways support to it all and because it's going to be warm and it's going to be running while that cob is still moist and still in place uh, it, it's just not an issue um, I shouldn't get any cracking and even if I did I mean, having built it, I'm really not concerned about um, about the repair. And here's the thing: I used to watch videos of people that are, you know, just jamming fuel into a mass heated churn. I'd have to be, you know, screaming at the YouTube saying, you know, be more gentle. I mean, you know, seriously, you're going to damage your heater. Having built it, I mean, repairs are a doddle; they really are. And with um, all of this, it's not being set in um, like a refractory mortar; it's just fire clay slip. So repairs are really easy. Um, I mean, I've got that's my lump of fire clay slip and sand for doing uh, you know gap filling and so on and I'm just going to put that on top of the barrel and let it cook you know let it heat and it will dry out and I can put that on a shelf with the other you know um, bits and pieces 
uh, for the repair of the, the system and I've got the materials I need there, all they need is wetting out a little bit and they're good to go. So when I do the plastering I'll make some little thin, you know, that sort of shape of the plaster material, set that aside, you know, let it dry off and just set it aside so I've got the same material if I, you know, put a ding in it by dropping something on it or whatever, I can that's a good noise from the quail. Um, I can set it aside and you know it's good there for repairs if I ever need to do them with the same material and the same colour and the same blend. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to strip the cage back and then I'm going to cut the insulation back and then I'm going to completely reset this brick and it'll be like there was never a problem. So I cut off the, the, uh, the cage, I just trimmed the insulation back roughly. Um, I mean I could I've done this so easily even with the insulation in place it's really forgiving but uh, what I'm going to do now is I want to wet it down I've got to be fairly sharp which the entire firebox is still warm it's not hot it's totally safe to work on but it is oh, I should have more water. but it is warm so and fire brick really drinks water so with that done I'm just going to scrape off yeah it's working beautifully scrape off the fire clay slip that was already on there See how well that's coming off, really easy. And I'll do the same thing then with all the faces of the brick. And uh, that's all the prep done, ready for the refit. So I've got this brick here, this is still really quite warm. So I've got the brick that came off here outside cooling off. So it's uh, it's pretty much approaching zero out there, so it shouldn't take too long because at the moment, as soon as I put water on it to scrape it off, it's just you know evaporating off instantly. So while that's doing that, I'm making some clay slip. So I've got a bag of fire clay, and a basic kitchen sieve, and I'm just going to sieve out the smaller stuff. It's, uh, it's either it's fairly coarse. I don't think all fire clay is like this. Um, if you've got really fine fire clay, you don't need to do this. It just makes it a bit simpler. Because if you've got chunks, then you're going to end up with uh, you know, potential high spots and so on. It's going to get difficult getting everything really level. Not that it really matters in this particular course, because it's going back exactly where it was in exactly the same orientation. So I know everything will line up right. But you can see in the bottom of the bucket that this stuff's building up. And it's the finer stuff that will do a beautiful job. So I'm going to keep going with that until I've got a reasonable amount. Now I could just make a small amount and paint it onto the brick rather than dipping it. But uh, all I'll do if I've got too much is dry it down and when it's completely dry stick it in a little bag, label it up as fire clay slip and I've got some of this already done ready for future repairs. That's a fair bit collected in the bottom of the bucket. So I'm going to add water and have a look. And I'm not making like a putty, it's meant to be a fairly liquid mix. I'll stop that so I've got a bit of water left. I'll give that a stir. Alright, I'm going to get my hand in there now so I can break it up a bit better. But yeah, that's pretty good already. That's pretty soupy. Even though there are still some chunks that are almost approaching putty consistency in the bottom of it, there's not a lot of point in breaking all of that down because there's enough liquid on the surface of it that I can get a really good coating on the brick. So as soon as that brick's cooled off enough, I'm going to go ahead and fit it. So I'm pretty much good to go. I've got my clay slip made up, I've had my brick, that's gone outside and that's cooled off nicely and I've soaked this in water for about 10 minutes because otherwise as soon as I put the clay slip on it's going to absorb that moisture and it's just going to be um, you know, it's going to be very difficult to do. I just put that down on carpet so let's clean that up. So that's pretty much good to go from the scorch marks and the fact that the clay was on the bottom I know that that goes into that orientation there. Um, oh one thing quick, this uh, system has no moving parts at all, it's part of the whole real benefits of it is there's nothing really to wear out with one exception. The brick below this one, which is just 
above whereas where the fuel feed becomes the burn tunnel that brick there is subject to a lot of stress so you've got cold air rushing down it through the fuel feed and it's got the heat of the burn tunnel as well so you've got a lot of thermal shock hitting that particular brick and they can in time crack um, you know but it's a very very slow process it'll still work even with it cracked but eventually you know things might get to the point that it starts to work loose you can see from this just how easy it is especially with a bit of insulation so you've got a bit of wriggle room you can see just how easy it is to replace even that brick that's you know two courses down and by the time I put the next course of brick on here which will be a thin one um, that is you know three courses down very very simple all this easily disassembles and goes back together again it's like you know Lego stuck with clay brilliant so I've got to get this fitted so I'm gonna let's have a look whether it'll actually take clay slip just with the dipsy, that's pretty good, but I'm gonna add a bit more. In fact, where's my scraper? It make more sense. So I'm gonna put, you see, there's still a bit of gravel in it, but it really doesn't need much. There's the bottom edge, give that a good coating, that's perfect. And then we've got that edge there, so really. It was only that face there that I had any issues with, so I'm going to give that another bit of a dip again. Right, let's tilt the bucket. So I can, that's better. There we go. I'm going to double dip everything. So let's get a good coat of clay on. And then I'm going to see. <laughs> I've just done that. Have I done that the wrong side? No, that's right. Okay. Second guessing myself there. So I'm just going to put that into place. Let's just check that there's no insulation jammed in. That's it, we're good. So I'm going to put that down into place. And I just need to make sure that that the line there is perfectly in line. And that's it, it's repaired. So I'll take a bit of this and I'll work it into the joints just to act as a bit of sealant. I'll scrape off the excess once it's dried off. And I'll get a bit of the slightly thicker stuff like that and I'll just use that as a kind of grout just where all the joins are so this hasn't required me calling out any sort of engineer nobody got to be call you registered you can just do it yourself in your own time at your own pace for pennies and that's it yeah that's sealed in really nice see that's beautiful that's it that's that fire brick reset that's that repair done